Welcome back. We're going to continue the series we started with looking at kids' goals in their behaviors. And the idea of it is to look um, underneath what they're doing or saying in the moment to what actually might be fueling this. What's the message that they're bringing along with this? And by doing that, you will actually avoid just putting out the spot fires and you'll deal with the actual source of the issue. So then the behavior can really change or stop. I remember a time when I was with a guy and he was taking some bubble mix and just flinging it all over the room. <laughs> and I was setting limits about it and saying, I, I can tell you want to fling the, the bubble mix around the room. And he just said, no, I'm trying to stain the wall. <laughs> and I thought, okay, uh, hmm. And remember, we talked before about you want to look at a child's behavior, look at what they're doing, look at how it makes you feel then the message that might be underneath that, and then how you could help them meet that goal appropriately or respond appropriately to it. Well, in this case, I felt pretty annoyed. <laughs> I didn't like that. Um, and, and I was reflecting, you know, that that's what he was trying to do. And he said, nope, I'm really trying to just stain the walls. When I looked underneath what he was doing, I thought, okay, this guy, he wants power. He wants some control here. And part of what he's doing he wants, I think he wants to be able to choose for himself. He's sort of planting his flag in this thing and saying, hey, I want to choose something here. I want to choose to do something the way I want to do it. And so when I thought about, is there a way to, you know, meet that message or that goal appropriately? There was. So we kind of brainstormed ways that he could fling this bubble stuff and it wouldn't stain the wall, but it would stain something. And so he came up with this fantastic invention of this cardboard sort of uh, target area, and he could stain that as much as he wanted to, and he just had a great time doing it. And you know, being able to do it that way made it so this never came up again. We were done. So power and control is the thing we're gonna take a look at today. And in looking at that, uh, I just wanna mention that there's a couple things to keep in mind. So one is um, these dynamics that we're up against. Last time we talked about um, uh, trying to get attention, attention seeking. This one is power and control. There are moments where it's not just that dynamic, but kids can actually be flipping their lid. They, they can actually become so upset that their neurological state changes. And there's a video series I made about that that I'll link to in the description. You can certainly look at that if you want to get some ideas about it. The things that we're talking about are not that. So when they're in that flipping your lid kind of mode, it's almost like dealing with an animal trapped in the corner. They're not choosing anymore. What we're talking about, they're choosing. They're choosing to engage you. Even if they're locked on and can't seem to stop, they're choosing as opposed to kind of more reacting out of this altered state where they're in sort of a fight or flight or freeze collapse. So um, when you think about working with power and control, uh, one of the things you for sure want to bring to this is a sense of containment. And what I mean when I say that is you don't want to be escalated yourself. You want to be able to come in and feel like you have a sense of what to do. And so that may take some thinking um, just on your own or, or even practicing with someone that you trust to get a sense of how to do this. Um, I think of containment like kind of how a bomb squad works. They, they come in and if there's an explosive, they'll sometimes put this sort of a dome or a tent over the explosive. And then if it explodes, nobody's going to get hurt. It's okay. And that's what we are for the kids that we're with. We become like that tent. We contain their big feelings. I don't mean su suppress them or squash them. I mean if they explode or if they flip their lids or whatever happens, that we are safe to be around and we know what to do. And that's part of why I'm making this video today is to help you know what to do. So, so bringing that containment in will really help a lot because if you don't feel escalated, if you don't feel like you're in a crisis, um, they're a lot less likely to also. So let's do this. We'll take a look at a few examples and we'll just go through those different stages of this. We'll look at a child's behavior, how that makes you feel, and remembering that how they make you feel is going to be a clue for what's going on. What's the message they're bringing? And that's the next part. What's that message? What's the goal that they've got? Can we meet that goal appropriately or what's a good response to that? 
So there was someone that I knew who was so bossy. And <laughs> when whenever there was a game being played, he would just make all the rules so that he made sure there was no way he could lose. He was always going to win. And he was in control of what, what everybody was doing, really. And that just wasn't very fun to be around. So when he would do that, what I would feel is... A, annoyed and irritated i i kind of just wanted to get away as i reflected on that and i thought about what what is the message this guy's bringing or what what is he saying underneath this i think his experience was that he would go to other kids and be trying to play and they nobody would want to play with him because he was too bossy so he it's like he's reaching for him and they're just kind of moving away from him so the only way he could secure playtime or social time was to lock it in with rules. So you couldn't get out of it. You couldn't leave. And I think that's what he was doing with me. When I can identify that goal or that message, why that gives me a lot more room to have compassion as opposed to just feeling annoyed and, and irritated and wanting to get away. So that helps me a lot. If I pay attention to that feeling, I connect to that goal. I've got something here. So I suspect this guy probably doesn't really know how to engage uh, in participating in a meaningful way without locking people in. Um, and he feels like he's not important. He, he sort of just doesn't count unless he's in charge of this thing. So can I meet this goal, you know, in some kind of way that's appropriate? Well, sure. So it may be that we pull from some things from the attention-seeking ideas, that we give this guy a role. Maybe he needs something he can be in charge of, but that he has room that leaves for other people to be in charge of too. It could be that we'll need to use something like the ACT model, uh, and that's a, another video that I posted. You can take a look at that uh, to get ideas about that. But the ACT model is about setting limits and giving choices. And so may end up even saying, if you choose to keep making all the rules and not letting me make any choices, then you choose for me not to play. It's not fun for me to do it that way. So that's a way of retraining him and letting him know. I'm not punishing him. I'm not rejecting him or pushing him away. I'm just letting him know if you keep doing it this way, then you're choosing for me not to play. It's just up to you. It may be that um, we can kind of problem solve this and say, gosh, you know, I can see you really like being in charge of this part and this other part's kind of fun for me. Which parts could we each take so we each have some things that are fun for us? So those could all be ways um, that you could respond to that. When kids feel bossy, if you can identify with that, that feeling in yourself, that's very likely the feeling that they are having or that everybody else around them is having and that can really help you tune into what's going on. I knew a girl who was also very bossy and um, she would she'd also make rules but she you know she'd want to tell you what to do now you stand there now you do this and she had this idea of how she wanted things to be in her mind she could really picture it and it, it just felt so controlled I just I kind of wanted to just you know break out of her thing that's the feeling I had. And as I reflected on it, I, I think, again, that's how kids around her felt. They, they just didn't want to be around her and play. And as I got to know her story more, I actually found out for her, um, she really didn't know how to participate in things. And when she tried to get on teams or, or join groups, they'd just reject her. And so she'd kind of preempt it by just making a bunch of rules in there so you'd have to stay, sort of like that other boy that I described. And it's so helpful to get the sense of the message she's sending here is, boy, I'm just not important. I just don't show up on the radar for anybody unless I'm in charge. So I always have to put myself in this role of being in charge to be important. So how can we meet that? Well, if we can give her a way to be important that doesn't require being in charge of everything, then she'll feel okay. So again, maybe giving her a role or maybe helping her find something that she's good at doing that she could enjoy doing as part of it. There was um, a family that I knew who, <laughs> they, boy, this was, this was a hard one. They were using timeouts um, to discipline their child, and he got to the point where he was getting old enough and big enough 
that when they gave him a timeout, he just rebelled and he just laid down on the ground and he said, make me. And they couldn't. They couldn't pick this kid up, literally. He was just too big. So they were stuck. And they felt so controlled by this guy. What, what are they going to do? So when I think of that, the feeling I get is I feel defeated or I feel threatened. And I think that's part of how he felt. He feels defeated. and He feels threatened when other people are making the choices for him. He wants to make some of his own choices. He's planting his flag in this thing saying, you can't make me... I can decide some of this stuff for myself. And they used elements of the ACT model. They just give him choices. Well, you can choose to do uh, your timeout or you can choose to give up some time on the Xbox. It's just your best choice, whatever you, you decide. And for him, being able to have choices made it so that he could have some power, an acceptable amount of power, an appropriate amount of power where he could choose. And for him, that helped him work his way out of having to have these power battles or power struggles to regain power because it was okay for him to have an appropriate amount of power. I hope this helps to just uh, see below the surface of some of these struggles that you can get into with your kids to see some of the sources of what might be going on. If you can tune into the source of the real issue, what, what is the message they're bringing? What is their goal? You don't even have to mess with any of these spot fires trying to put those out. You can really deal with the main thing and see things change. So I wish you all the best in this. This does take practice, and you can spend time practicing with people you trust. Um, you'll probably get plenty of practice with your own kids <laughs> or kids that you work with. So I wish you all the best in this. Take care.